make lip service to Islam, but they would not allow Islam to, be, to affect the common people. Whatever form it took in various parts of Africa, a fusion occurred between the black Moors, the Garmantes of the Sahara, um, who became very powerful. In fact, the Romans found they could not defeat them. They had chariots and their javelin throwers, etc. They became a very powerful, sophisticated people at first, farming and then be building cities, etc. Those were largely the black Moors. However, there came another type, Libyans, etc., people who had come into the Sahara, um, fair-skinned Libyans who had mixed with black types. So you have both the mixed or tawny Moors and you have the black Moors. Into this came the Arabian, some of them fair-skinned, some of them dark, some of them becoming dark through intermixing with the women of the Garamantes and the other African people. So it was a very mixed bunch. But when they attacked Spain in 711 AD, out of 7,000 troops, 6,000 were black Africans. Now, why did they attack Europe in the first place? Now, the Moors were intent, the Muslims were intent on conquering as much of the world as they could in order to bring their religion into the world, just as the Christians earlier in the Crusades had tried to conquer as much of the world as they could in order to bring Christianity to various people. Well, the Muslims advanced in various places. They advanced into India, they advanced into China. Even to this day, you have many Muslims in India, you have many Muslims in China. In my country, half the people are Muslims and Hindus, and the other half are Christians. Okay, so that they advanced into various countries, bringing their religion, and they went into Africa, into marrying with various African people. They formed various states. In North Africa, there was a battle going on between the Muslim forces and someone by the name of Count Julian. There was a little Greek outpost called Ceuta on the edge of Morocco. And they kept fighting, but they could not conquer it because even though it was small, it was almost indestructible. Eventually, however, Count Julian had sent his daughter to Spain. Spain was ruled by the Visigoths under King Roderick. And Roderick seduced Count Julian's daughter. Count Julian got very up upset about it and decided to join with the Africans and the Arabs. Gave them ships and showed them how to get across at a vulnerable point. The first man to, 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 to enter Spain, though he did not attack, was Tarif. That's how we get the term Tarif. Okay, because he actually imposed a duty. He went into Gibraltar, he imposed a duty on various places he went into, and th that's how we get the word Tarif. He was followed by another man by the name of Tarif. Tariq led 7,000 troops, 6,000 African, 1,000 other types, Berbers, Libyans, Arabians, etc., up into Europe, and they defeated Spain. Within a short span of time, the Africans and the Arabs conquered a vast part of Europe from Spain right through to the Pyrenees. In a very short space of time, they took, they, uh, they took over Sicily, Spain, Portugal. They took also a small part of France, though in France they had a great, very difficult time. General Martel repulsed them in France, so they got a very small slice of France. They set up courts. They set up courts in Africa, North Africa, and they set up courts in Europe. Now, because of the ideas of equality and brotherhood, they did not seek to make slaves of these people. Some Arabs, and it has to be pointed out, that the Sunni, the, the marvelous Sunni Abdul Rahman, Sunni Muslim, although he did not participate in the slave trade, some of the Arabs and Jews did start a white slave trade. Okay, so that you have some white women who were taken as slaves and sent to other countries. But on the whole, you had an insistence by law that the Jew 
the Muslim and the Christian should be treated alike. They did not destroy their legal system. They did not destroy their language. But they brought a whole body of new things into Europe. Europe did not have a single paved street at that time. Europe did not have a single lamp in its streets. Europe did not have a single public library, only private libraries for the elite. Europe did not have a single public market. There were, there, there were one or two, yes, but they were not institutionalized body of public markets. They did not have public baths. All of these things were brought in by the Moors. And everything that could be translated in the world out of Egypt, which the Arabs conquered in 638 AD, out of India, out of China, out of the universities in Africa, like Timbuktu, Sankore, and a range of other universities in Africa, out of ancient Greece and Rome, which had taken, which had lost for a long time much of its sciences. These things were revived, translated, and brought up into Europe. Europe had two universities. The Moors introduced 17 universities into Europe. Europe was 99% illiterate, so was the rest of the world. A few people wrote and read in Africa, a few people wrote and read in Europe, a few people wrote and read in Asia, the same thing in America. I want you to note that Africa was not backward in relation to Europe. Africa had as many scripts as Europe. Let me repeat, Africa had the Meroitic script. It had the hieroglyphic script. It had the Akan script, both a drum script and a written script. It had the Mande script, which we find at Udmurtotek even 5,000 years ago. It had the Afaka script. It had the Vai script. Europe does not have any more scripts. Europe has very few scripts. Europe has the Roman script. It has the Greek script. It has the Celtic script, which is half and half. It's not entirely European. It has the Russian script. It has one or two more, just like the Africa. Many European tribes, just like many African tribes, do not have scripts. The English have no script. We do not write an English script. All we have are Anglo-Saxon songs. We use the Roman script. The Spanish have no script. The Germans have no script. So it's not a question of being civilized and making up scripts. They didn't make up any scripts. Scripts were brought to them by conquering Europeans. The Romans conquered Britain. And when they conquered Britain, there were no books. There were no writers. In fact, Cicero said, and I quote him, and I think it's rather unfair, but I quote him because he said so. He said, these people are so ignorant, speaking of the Anglo-Saxon, that we are not even sure we can turn them into good slaves. <laughs> Yet when I was at university, I was being told about how literacy, that the Africans were preliterate, and literacy began in Europe. We have found Africans writing on the edge of the Sudan, in a place called Kustur, the dynasty of Tarseti, we have found them doing this 200 years before the first Egyptian dynasty. There is nobody else. In Sumer, Sumer was to come later. The earliest dates we have at Sumer or Babylon is about 2600 BC. We're talking about 3300 BC. So nobody can talk about the African being backward in this regard, not at all. All these things were brought in, translated into Arabic, which became the language of science, just as Latin earlier had been the language of scholars, Arabic became the language of science. And Arabic is not just used by Arabs, the Arabic script was invented when Arabia was completely black. It was invented by an African called Abul Aswan, 
It's recorded in the diaries of Ibn Khalikan, page 661.